Hi, hi. Uh, welcome. This is Audrey Devine coming at you from Kilkenzie House. And uh, we're doing the last demonstration of the weekend, and I decided to film it. And uh, have a look at the links below if you want to know more about my workshops and things. Thanks. Thank you for tolerating this. Okay, so this is Robin Sandler, and I'm going to paint his eye. And that'd be if you want to eventually come a bit closer to see what's happening here. But first, I wanted to kind of do um, the general moves over, just to kind of map my way into spinning the eye. Um, I don't have my microphone on, so I'm probably not going to be doing that again. So I'm still finding, you know, finding some stepping stones around before really getting into um, the eye. So a little bit of turning in red into those colours to give me colour for um, the shadow down the back there. And can someone tell me for say seven more minutes? How about that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Just going to bring something. So sometimes when you put on a colour that's quite dark, you could always um, use it as a reservoir and just pull it around, you know, put it, put it in other places. <coughs> of the line dividing the lips. I don't know what it looks to divide the eye. It doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> I suppose it does really. I said I would do it. Yeah, I was man. Just something for the, the line dividing the lips so I know the location of that before I then begin to place the eye. So what I was talking about earlier was that kind of pushing and lifting thing. So or even pressing and lifting so that Paint paints itself on the way back down. The the area that's been filled with water, um, can be occupied with paint again. Um, and then you just continue bringing that shadow up to meet the lovely light that's on the, the length of the nose there. That's something to describe the underside of the nose, and then the light uh, the shadow of the socket on the other side. Um, to begin with spinning the eye on that side too. Dark of the eyebrow. Okay, now I'm going to find the position of the iris here. So looking at the eyebrow above it to see where the um where the iris would would cut through the eyebrow if I was to continue it up the way. And just use the quarter inch brush to find the position of the iris. It's a better size, I think. And actually, what I want to do first is to find where the eyelid. The eyelashes, the eyelash line would cut through the eyebrow. I think it might be about here. Do you remember yesterday I was saying to look for the shape of the skin between the eyebrow and the eyelid? Look for the skin shape that's between the two, um, rather than see it as painting an eye, really. And then the, the upper lashes overlap the iris a little bit. So as well as there being a couple of directions to the eyebrow, there's also a couple of directions to the um, eyelid below. And it goes fairly steeply into the corner. Like the alizarin crimson, I think I could put there. The alizarin crimson I could put here to indicate the inside corner of the eye. And uh, a little bit of ultramarine blue. Right there. Sure. <coughs> And I suppose putting some of that same dark now elsewhere would let it not be so dominant. Uh, there. And um, a bit bigger. Any chance you feel like you're getting anytime you feel like you're getting a bit pernickety with the brush marks, aim for a bigger a bigger brush and just do a more general move. Even 
Okay. I don't know whether that was a bit wet underneath because it's all kind of dissipated, hasn't it? I'd say what I just need to do there now, the, the little things that would help me to really create the eye shape are to define more clearly the so the outer edge of the outer corner of the eye is lower than the inner corner. I've established the inner cor corner already. I've got the arc of the eyebrow and the line of the upper lid, although it's a little bit undefined. The line of the upper lash is there. Uh, and then the outer corner is a little bit lower than the inner corner of the eye. So I'm going to let that drop down a little bit with the corner of the quarter inch brush. Let's bring that a touch. <clears throat> and then I'm going to see how wet the iris is. Just very flipping the brush into it. Yeah, it's still quite wet there. So what I want to do instead now is to find something with the shadows on the underside of the eye. Coming up to meet the light on the lower lid. So with the alizarin crimson mixed in to whatever else was on my palette really helpful isn't it? Blizzard and Crimson mixed into all the rest of it makes some kind of a colour that's going to... That makes sense to me. Thank you. <laughs> that's going to describe the kind of little arc that's there and then I could also use that colour I think to push up and lift uh, just to kind of outline the light and then yeah, Samuel, it's the worst time to do an eye demonstration, isn't it? After a nice hearty lunch and your, your eyes are like... <laughs> I mean, they're not, but I can see the struggle. <laughs> okay, so cerulean blue and the white of the eye is, um, is always a good one, I think, to, to make it different. Because the cerulean blue means that it's uh, a little bit darker than the skin below it. It just gives it some sort of uh, value. I'll put some on the inner corner as well for some reason. Uh, and the inside white bit too. Thanks, Jackie. You're doing a great job there. Are you <laughs> managing to actually see anything yourself? Yes, yeah, so. <coughs> Getting a bird's eye view. Okay. <laughs> no, so cadmium red in there to connect with the eyebrow. I thought maybe the eyebrow was still wet. It's not. So I want to now make it a bit darker. So I'll put some brown in there and bring it across. It's quite a good fun to, no, no, what I would suggest is that you don't linger over one eye for so long, but that you move around and get bigger brushes to do the shoulder and the, uh, everywhere else. But I wanted to kind of illustrate how enjoyable it can be just to pull out the colour and the shapes of parts of the eye. Um, you know, there's, there's a whole load to look at there. Um, yeah, so what I need to do now, I think what I'll do next is the pupil kind of hanging down from that upper lid. And the upper lash is the pupil hanging in, you know, like a pendulum coming down from the, the dark of the eyelash there. Although we can't really see a pupil, I think it's quite, we kind of know that there'll be a shadow, at least a shadow kind of cast from the upper lid onto the iris possibly. And uh, part of that shadow could maybe create a, a shape for a pupil to sit there. And then I want to lift off the light on the lower lid. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. I'm just going to leave it longer. Lift off, thank you, the light that's here. And then inject a bit of clean colour from Evie's palette. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> yours is much cleaner than mine. In order to put some warm orange there, like. It's a bit too bright, but you know that you get the idea that, and when it's warm, it'll come forward a bit more. Um, it would be really nice if it was fully dry, so I could kind of chip into the iris and make it clearer. But it's not dry yet. In a few minutes, it'll be dry enough, I'd say. So, but that's um, it's it's good enough to just have indicated the position of the iris, knowing you can later come back in and do uh, and achieve more clarity in in the lights and darks around that. Um, in that area and probably as I was encouraging you all morning I could be standing back a lot more regularly like going right back there a lot more I'll just say goodbye to you lot there now I'd say it's nearly done thanks very much for watching